So just over a decade ago, I decided that I needed a little bit more excitement into my life. I needed a little bit more danger in my life. So I took up skydiving as a hobby. I found myself a drop zone and I signed up for lessons. And right from day one, we were drilled on the most fundamental skill of skydiving. And that is the stable body position. Now, to get into the stable body position, one needs to only think of one word, arch. So you arch your back, open up your arms, and bend your legs at the knees. And naturally, you would find yourself flying in what we call the belly-to-earth position. Now, it's a position that gives you maximum control in the sky and allows you to deploy your parachute safely. So at every single jump, we were drilled on this aspect. Then came my 25th jump. Peculiarly, the name of that stage was called Unstable Exit. And I wasn't sure exactly what I was expected to perform, but I think the name did give a useful hint. So I was assigned to my instructor who explained it all to me. And he said, Thaddeus, there will be times in your skydiving when something would go awry in the sky. You might hit the aircraft on your way out. <laughs> Someone might bump into you. Or a maneuver could unexpectedly break apart. Now, any of those will throw you off balance. And it will be critical and crucial that you're able to get back into the stable body position. Now, in order for me to assess your competency in that, I need to deliberately get you out of the plane in an unstable position. <laughs> Hence, unstable exit. So this is how it's going to work, he says. Imagine you're on a plane, and the plane's flying in that direction. And you're seated on the floor of the aeroplane, looking towards the back of the aircraft. Now, on the side, there'll be a door. And above the door, there'll be two sets of lights. One red, one green. Now, once we get up to an altitude of 12,000 feet, the red light will come on. That means prepare to jump. Now, as the jump master, I will open up the door. And when the pilot determines that it is now safe to jump, please go ahead, he will turn on the green light. Now, at that point, I'd like you to come to the door and get right up to the edge without falling out and turn and face the inside of the aircraft. Then I'm going to get you to squat all the way down, bring your knees to your chest and wrap your arms around your legs. Now, I'm going to be inside the aircraft, and I'll be holding on to your chest strap. And I will count, ready, set, go. <laughs> on go, I will give you a push, and you will tumble out the aircraft. At that point, all you will see is blue, green, blue, <laughs> green, blue, green. The blue of the sky and the green of the fields below. I'd like you to count to three revolutions and then arch and get back into your stable body position. I'll be inside the aircraft watching you. <laughs> the moment I see that you're able to arch into your stable position, I will pass you for this stage. If you do not get into your body, a stable body position, I will fail you. But then again, Tharias, if you do not get into the stable body position, <laughs> failing this course will be the least of your worries. <laughs> okay. Okay. But I know you will do it, and I, I know you can do it. Right. And oh, by the way, Thaddeus, this is going to be the best jump ever. <laughs> and all I could think of at that time was, no, it's not. <laughs> it's a stupid jump. It's risky and it's foolhardy. I'm not sure I want to, and to be honest, I'm not sure I can. But somehow, I found myself following him to the aircraft. And I took my position on the floor of the aircraft, facing the back. 
Now, the ride up to altitude is uneventful until the red light comes on. My jump master opens up the door and immediately the relative quiet and calm of the cabin is replaced by this howl of the wind and the roar of the engines and just freezing, biting cold. And at this point, my mind is just racing at terminal velocity and I can't even hear myself think. And all too soon, the green light comes on. And somehow, above all that din of that noise, I hear my instructor going, to the door, to the door! And I inch there, getting up, right up to the edge, like, oh God, it's high. And I'm turning around, I'm thinking, okay, what do, okay, it's quite all the way down, how my name is. And I'm just about going there, and I'm looking into the eyes of my instructor, looking for some reassurance and some hope. <laughs> and I'm just barely halfway there when he goes, go! <laughs> you know what it's like? The feeling of betrayal. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. That was me falling out of the aircraft. <laughs> And immediately, I'm flipping, I'm flopping in the air, I'm turning in un involuntary cartwheels, and it's not so much blue, green, blue, and green as it is blue, green, legs, arms, and <laughs> everything's flying everywhere. I'm in this mile-high washing machine on spinner mode. And after three revolutions, I think, <laughs> I got arch. And it works. I get into that stable position, my heart begins to emerge back out of my mouth, <laughs> and all is calm again. And I deploy my parachute, and I ride safely down to earth. And the moment I get down there, my instructor comes up to me and he goes, so Thaddeus, how was it? <laughs> That's the best jump of my life! <laughs> now, that instructor took me for just that one jump, and I can't for the life of me remember his name but I'll never forget his push. <laughs> because in that one jump, he taught me a valuable lesson. In fact, he gave me a demonstration of what is it that leaders do. That leaders would push you out of that false assurance of your comfort zone into the space of real growth and exceptional performance. Leaders would push you beyond your own perceived limits. And leaders will push you towards surpassing yourself, even if you didn't think you could in the beginning. Now, about two years after that, I decided that I was going to take another step out of my comfort zone that I was really now truly going to live life at the edge and to conquer a near paralyzing fear. I took up dancing lessons. <laughs> Specifically, salsa dancing. Now, those of you who are familiar with salsa, you would know that it's, it's an energetic dance and it's rhythmic and it's as addictive as it is seductive. And it is a beautiful, sensual dance. So I signed up for lessons once again. And to see salsa dancers always looking as if they're having so much fun. And they hone their skills by changing partners and learning to dance with different people. And our instructor used to tell us at every lesson, he said, guys, if you really want to be a dancer or to learn how to dance this properly, you've got to go out there and do it. You cannot just come once a week for a couple of hours in the dance studio to do a few steps. You must go out there and find a salsa club or find a night, um, a salsa night in a nightclub and go out there and practice and do it. And so that was what we did on a few occasions. My classmates and I would go out to the salsa club and to be honest, in, in hindsight, I was probably too self-conscious to ever make it as a vaguely competent salsa dancer. Somehow just being on a dance floor with dozens of pairs of eyes looking at me just got me too anxious. And I'd be thinking, oh, what if, what if I get it wrong? You know, what, what if I step on my partner's toes? What, 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 if, what, if, what if, what if I? And so you might say that I suffered from SPA. 
salsa performance anxiety. <laughs> so what I, did, what I did was I'll take my partner to a darker, more deserted part of the nightclub. <laughs> and, and we just step on each other's toes there. <laughs> Right. And on one, one, one occasion, one evening, I actually ventured towards the dance floor and to, just to check out the action there. And, and something caught my eye. In fact, one gentleman caught my eye. Now, this guy literally had a line of women just waiting to dance with him. And at the end of each song, when his clearly satisfied partner walks off, another girl would literally jump in front of him and say, dance with me. You know, my turn, I won. And I would watch this. Song after song, the same thing would happen. And I just stood there thinking, that guy is my hero. <laughs> when I grow up, I want to dance like him. So I found my instructor. And I asked him, I said, look, 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 check it out, right? Look, look at that couple, look, look at the guy dancing, right? Tell me, what is it about his dancing, his, his lead, his style, his form, you know? What is it that makes him so irresistible to all these women? You know, what's the secret? So my instructor looked. And then after a while, he turned to me and he asked, he said, Thaddeus, when you and all these people are watching that couple dance, who exactly are you looking at? Are you looking at him or are you looking at her? And I said, well, everyone's looking at her, of course. And he says, that's it. That's the secret. And I'm like, okay, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? He says, you see, Thaddeus, that guy, when he dances, his focus is solely on his partner. His dancing and his lead is not about style or about form. His dance, it's all about having his partner look good and feel good. See, every girl that comes to dance with him gets to be at the center of attention. They get to feel like they're at the top of their world. And if you could lead every single one of your partner through such an experience, you too would have a line of women waiting to dance with you. I stopped salsa dancing not long <laughs> after that. But I never stopped telling this story because that was an education for me around what ultimately leadership is all about. See, leadership is not about being in a position of importance, but about lifting someone to feel important. Leadership is not about standing at the top of your world, but it's about putting someone else at the top of their world. And ultimately, leadership is not about being a hero, but about making heroes of other people and celebrating them. I thank you. 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 Thank you.